Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tiny10, which is a very miniature version of Windows 10 designed and developed by NT Dev. Tiny10 is really meant to be ran on very low-end hardware, such as things that are 10, 15 years old, and it's really meant to shrink the installation size of Windows 10 down to just a couple of gigabytes. Today, we're just going to install the operating system, see what's there, and go through that kind of stuff. So, let's begin. So first, I have to select the ISO. And now for operating systems, we're not going to pick Windows 10. We can, but if we pick Windows 10, we're going to have to make a new hard drive. Tiny10 does not support NVMe SSDs, which is what Windows 10 is automatically defaulted to. So for me, I always pick Windows 7. This just creates an SCSI drive, and it works better that way. If you try to install Tiny10 on an NVMe drive, it will blue screen after install. So for our maximum disk size, we're going to simply go with 10 gigabytes because this is all that Tiny10 needs. In fact, it probably doesn't even need 10. On my test VM, it probably used about 4 gigabytes. So we're going to go with 10. And so just for our specifications, we currently have 1 gigabyte of RAM, 1 processor core, and 10 gigabytes of SCSI storage. We're going to go ahead and power on our virtual machine. And straight away, we can see that the Windows logo is popping up. So this is like an official build of Windows. It's not officially made by Microsoft. This is like a fan-made version. But personally, I really love this operating system, and I will be using it on some of my computers that I have in my drawer. As we can see by the copyright date, this is a 2018 version of Windows 10, meaning it's a little bit old. However, I'm not sure if you can update this. Maybe we'll do that in a future video, but currently this is running a 2018 build. So this is either 1803 or 1809. So this is just your standard Windows setup. Nothing has been changed here. It's a ton faster, I noticed. Installation probably takes about one minute, and I'm not kidding. It's extremely fast. So to activate Windows, we can actually enter a standard product key. However, I don't actually know the addition of this. It could be Pro, Home, Enterprise, whatever. So we're just going to skip activation for now. It doesn't really matter because we're not using this full time. So these are the exact same terms that are from Microsoft. As I said, set setup has not been modified at all. So here is our 10 gigabytes of unallocated space, and we're going to go ahead and click Next. So as we can see, this is just speeding through. We're going to 8, 13. Installation for me really only took a minute, and just like that, in a matter of, we're done. It really went ridiculously fast. Now we're going to restart. We're going to have to run through some things while it boots up. And then we're going to be able to enter our name, enter our personal info, and that kind of stuff. All right, so in a matter of one minute since we've installed Windows, it had to boot up, and now we are in the setup. Now, you'll be amazed by just how responsive this setup is compared to a typical Windows 10 setup, because when I set it up for the first time, I noticed so many changes. Not changes, but performance changes. It runs so much better. There's only one keyboard layout. Now, there's tons of other options you can choose, but I don't think they actually do anything, and just to play it safe, we're going to be US. If we add another layout, there is all the other layouts, so if we wanted to add two, we can, but we're going to go ahead and skip that. Now, for our username, we're going to go ahead and just type Windows, and then skip a password. Just to make Tiny10 a little bit faster, we're going to go ahead and disable all of these things. I disable them anyway, but just to make this faster, we're going to go ahead and do that. And so after I went and I went ahead and I finished the out-of-box experience, I am now frozen. So we're going to go ahead and reset the virtual machine and hopefully we'll boot into our desktop. If not, we'll go through the entire out of box experience again and we'll just go ahead and see if that works. But there we go. We are currently booting in to Windows 10 and simply it was that simple. Now one thing missing is autoplay. I went and I go ahead and I selected install VMware tools and nothing popped up. So we're going to go ahead and have to manually install those. Now, setup 64 does not run, so we're going to go have to run the 32-bit setup, which is totally fine. I was just a little shocked that this is the 32-bit version. Now, just for boot up times, I had to restart the computer after installing VMware tools. And just to show you how quick this operating system boots up, we just posted and we're loading into Windows right now. This is an extremely, extremely fast loading, and quite frankly, we're almost in the desktop, and there we are. It was that simple. Now, first impressions, there's not a lot. We really have four basic UI elements, our icons, our start menu, which we'll get into in a minute, our tray, and our wallpaper, which there is currently no wallpaper, and we can't even change it. We can, of course, add a wallpaper, but by default, there's nothing. 
So taking a look at the pre-installed apps, we get the literal bare minimum. We have settings, Windows accessories, which is restricted to WordPad, Paint, Notepad, and Calculator. The administrative tools, this is not all of them, but it's a lot of them. And of course, your Windows system. There is a search. We can show the search icon, so we can enable search. But search does not even work. That was taken out. So there is no search. There is no internet browser pre-installed by default, so we are going to have to install one. While we wait for Microsoft Edge to install, we're going to go ahead and check out what version we're running. So we're running Windows 10 version 1809, and this is Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. So it's a pretty relatively old operating system, but it is the Enterprise version, and I'm sure we can... This isn't the evaluation, it's just the standard enterprise version. However, I'm sure something could work out eventually, you know, if we figured out how to re-enable the evaluation. As for our start menu, this is it. I already went through all the apps, and we can even pin stuff to start, and it looks more like a normal start menu. However, why would we do that if we wanted a minimalistic look for Windows 10? S simple, it's really lightweight. And if you go ahead and look at Task Manager, just seeing how quick everything loads, with one gigabyte of RAM, we are idling at 450 megabytes in use. So I would say that's pretty good, and especially with a lighter browser like Microsoft Edge, I feel like for an older computer that you're just using for web browsing, Windows 10, when Tiny 10 is really useful for specifically that. In fact, it's built for lightweight computers and things that can't really handle real Windows 10. One thing that we'll have to check out in the future is if you can actually update this to Windows 10 version 20H2 or even 21H1, if it would corrupt anything. Going into Windows Update, there is no update, so we'd have to use the media creation tool, but I'd be worried that would mess something up a little bit. So we're going to try that in another video. However, for right now, this is really it. There is no action center. Um, there is minimalistic time. There's no things for your calendars or dates. Volume is standard volume, and that's really all that's pre-installed on this operating system. Yes, this is a 32-bit operating system, as I thought earlier, but that's fine. So, but this, I would say this is like Chrome OS, it's pretty lightweight, and you really use it to browse the internet, except if you have to install Windows applications, this is still a 32-bit copy of Windows, so you can use it to your advantage. You can install any Windows applications you'd like, and it's really lightweight, and I recommend it. There's literally no bloatware on this system. If this had a few more features, I would say this is the ideal copy of Windows 10 for someone to install on an older computer. However, you can really probably figure out a way to re-enable those things. So this was Tiny 10. It's a very lightweight copy of Windows 10, and quite honestly, I love it. It's one of the best versions of Windows 10 that I've ever tried, and it's really fast. I would love to see this on a real older computer. Maybe I'll have to install this on my Pentium 4 computer, because I feel like this would run extremely well. So if you're new around here, make sure to like and subscribe because I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.